Our first um, weighted residual method is what's called the collocation uh, method. It's uh, a simple way. It uh, it can be presented in two different uh, uh, presentations. One of which is kind of mathematical. The other is a straightforward one. Uh, the straightforward one actually says that uh, it's uh, the collocation method is something like uh, the buttons of your shirt. Uh, if you are wearing a shirt that has no buttons at all, uh, then you end up with each side of the shirt going its own way. Using buttons, you are forcing these two sides to uh, be at the same point, the point of the button, uh, at the same time anytime. However, between those buttons, uh, the shirt is free to wiggle as it likes. Uh, now imagine increasing the number of buttons. What you get out with is uh, a shirt that's more or less uh, having both sides of that shirt uh, acting in a similar way all the time. Uh, you end up, of course, with the extreme case where you use a zipper. Uh, so many uh, buttons uh, connecting both sides of a shirt, uh, you end up with the exact solution. Uh, so uh, our uh, aim using the collocation method is to uh, say uh, to force the residue to be equal to zero at some points. Now uh, we remember that the residue cannot be equal to zero in all the domain, unless of course we have the exact solution. So uh, what we do is um, force it. Uh, to be equal to zero at some specific points. Uh, now, uh, these points are going to be called uh, R of xj, where xj is some internal point. Remember that uh, the uh, approximate function uh, satisfies the boundary conditions. Uh, the uh, xj's are any internal points. It cannot be any of the boundary points, of course, because they are already uh, satisfied. If you uh, plug in x equals xj uh, in all the uh, functions, in all the approximate functions, psi of i and g of uh, sorry, psi i of x and g of x, here it's, uh, I called it f of x, uh, you end up uh, with uh, a set of equations. Each equation is forced to be equal to zero at xj. That's how we get the collocation method. Uh, in a little bit more mathematical way of presenting the collocation method, we can assume that we selected our weighing, fu weighing functions to be the Dirac delta function uh, at xj. Uh, the, when you multiply a function by the Dirac delta function and integrate over the domain, you end up with evaluating that function at those points. Well, if, if it's not clear, uh, you may just skip this uh, part and continue. Now, uh, to illustrate what we are uh, saying here, let's consider the uh, uh, bar problem. Uh, uh, the differential equation that describes the behavior of a bar with distributed force, here uh, this is a distributed external force, and this uh, bar is fixed from the left and free uh, from the right. The boundary conditions would be then at x equals zero, the displacement of the, uh, of the bar will be equal to zero because it can't move. And at x of l, the slope du by dx will be equal to zero, with, which is equal to the strain. Since we don't have any force here, uh, then the strain should be equal to zero. Uh, if uh, the mechanics of material derivation is not clear, uh, you may just consider that this is a general differential equation, some constant multiplied by the second derivative of a function plus some excitation term f of x, subject to boundary conditions, uh, uh, value of the function is zero at one side and the slope of the function is zero at the other side. Now, let's see what we will do if we just assume that u of x is a summation of uh, some functions, psi i of x, each is multiplied by an unknown coefficient, a i, and then we add all this up. 
If we substitute into the differential equation, you will get uh, the summation, of course, EA is a constant, so EA gets out of uh, the summation here. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the operator, the second derivative operator, just gets right away into uh, the summation and acts on the uh, functions, psi i. Uh, then you add all this up and say that this is equal to a zero. Now, uh, to apply the collocation method, we have to select some internal points, some points inside the domain between zero and L. Uh, these points, we call them xj's, and then uh, plug in the value of xj here, uh, and force it to be equal to zero. Each at each, each xj, you'll get uh, an equation that includes all the unknown coefficients ai's. At the end, uh, you get those n equations uh, with uh, uh, n unknowns. Uh, if you put them in a matrix form, you'll end up in uh, uh, with something that looks like this. Remember here that uh, these equations uh, don't have to be symmetric at all. The boundary conditions, of course, are not symmetric. Uh, uh, but these are solvable equations. You can solve them. Uh, again, uh, let me remind you, unless you have selected size, psi i's uh, uh, in a very bad uh, way. The general term kij can be presented as ea, uh, the second derivative of psi i at xj. Solve for uh, ai uh, and you'll get the approximate solution you are seeking. Now, uh, just a little note. Uh, on the trial functions or the psi i's that we used, uh, these approximate solutions, uh, that they should be twice differentiable. As you can see here, they are differentiated twice. Each of them is differentiated twice. So if this is a linear function, for example, uh, ax plus b or uh, mx plus c, uh, if you differentiate it twice, then you'll get a zero. So ki, in this case, kij will be equal to zero, in, uh, which is, of course, uh, going to uh, give you um, bad results. Actually, it will not give you any results at all. Uh, the second condition that it should satisfy all boundary conditions. So this function here uh, should satisfy the boundary conditions stated uh, earlier that it's equal to zero at x equals zero and the slope is equal to zero at the uh, other side. Uh, this might be the toughest part uh, to select a function that satisfies those boundary uh, conditions. Both conditions are called, or these two conditions are called the admissibility conditions. These are the conditions that allow a function. These are the, what admits a function into our uh, solution.